This is Jared with Source Decoded. I just wanted to show you guys some stuff that we've been working on at work um, and the problems that we'd come across and how we resolve them. The first thing is just a little bit of context. The context is uh, we were doing a lot of optimizations for our, our mobile application that we were building because when we were setting our styles through JavaScript it was causing unwanted redraws and uh, repaints and reflows and you just can't do that in mobile it just makes the application feel sluggish and you get that typical all oh, this is just a web technology application and I try my hardest not to have that stigma attached to my application so as we were optimizing this we found um, just some really neat things we really love the ease of use when it comes to um, using CSS, um, setting CSS through an object literal. So you have your keys, which represent the style va uh, style name, and then the values of those styles. It's just a very elegant way to, to do it. So we didn't want to get away from that. But what we did want to do is we wanted to optimize setting these things. And inside of HTML, <clears throat> or the DOM, I should say, is you have this style property which you can set styles I'm sure all of you have, have set a style like style dot background color camel cased and and you can set that but they also have this other property called CSS text essentially this is what is on the element in the HTML when you say style equals and you actually do it in the markup you can set the CSS text all at once and so instead of having um, a bunch of redraws, or maybe redraws and, and repaint. I'm, I'm sorry, repaints and reflows. You're only going to have one because you're going to set all these values at once. So in doing this, I needed to create a function where you pass the object of CSS style uh, of styles and return a string of key value pairs delimited with a col uh, a colon and then um, well heavens, that's a little bit hard to explain, but you have your your your, del your value and your key is delimited with a colon and then your your multiple values are delimited with a semicolon so in doing this my first run at this was what I'm about to show you I just wanted to explain the evolution that happened in my thought process I thought okay I need to make this into a string so I'm gonna say hey let's create a string variable called CSS text because that's what we're gonna return and let's iterate over the keys and grab the value from those keys and simply put those specific delimiters where they need to be, the colon and the semicolon. Well, that looks good, and there's nothing really wrong with that code. Um, the only issue is I didn't feel like it was beautiful. Whenever I see these declarations of values outside of a functional scope, I ask myself, do I really need to set it outside of there, or can I somehow get it inside scope? Well, the functional programming the more I, I learn about it, the more I love knowing that there's no side effects. And when you have values that you're using outside the function, for example, you're using something inside of here that's outside, whether it's coming from there or coming from here, that's, those are possible side effects. True functional programming is everything has to be given in parameters and everything is, is self-contained. And so in JavaScript they have this wonderful function called reduce and I'll admit it when I first came across reduce it was the most confusing thing I'd ever seen because I think the example they had was something like this and it, it did nothing but cause confusion for me because I'm I guess I'm a simple-minded fool um, but they did something like this they're like wow look how cool reduce is I can I can um, I can add stuff so they'll say first or they'll say uh, first or how would they say current and next or something like that and then they um, they simply do this return current plus next and um, so what would that, that be? that'd be 3, 6, 10 so this this value here is going to equal 10 um, that to me was confusing because first off what does the current thing mean and what does the next thing mean and in this case, if you don't supply with reduce, this is where it gets wonky. And this is what I wish they would have done instead of just not giving the second parameter in reduce, which I think is so important. Um, 
If they had done this, I would have understood this a lot better. If you don't supply the optional second parameter in reduce, it gives you the first and second item in the array for the first go around. And then everything after that, it's going to give you whatever you've returned here plus the next one, and whatever you turn from there to the next one. So, for example, if we were to do this the way that they have the example in Mozilla, you're going to get one and two, uh, current being the one and next being the two. But then the next one, you're going to have three being the current and three being the next. And I was scratching my head at that for so long, it was ridiculous. So what I always do is I, I like to explain with my code what it's doing. The reduce function is a lot like the signature I have up here. This is a beautiful thing because it describes, hey, the reduce, I want a value. I want to reduce this amount of data stored in this array to one thing. It can be an array, too, but it, it, I just want to reduce it to something. And in this case, below, into this value, what you're doing is you're reducing it, you're reducing all these values into one value. And so what I feel this describes is the value you're expecting back, the type that you're expecting back. So if you look at this signature here that I have written out, I want the t value to be what I'm getting back. And so the beginning value, I can set the beginning value of this, and it becomes the current variable in the first iteration. That makes sense to me, because if I'm going to add these things, I obviously start at zero. Or maybe I don't want to start at zero. Maybe I want to start at 100. But at least I can set that value. And I don't like how the behavior of this function changes based on whether you supply a, a second parameter or you don't. That just, oh, that just irks me. But I so what I always do is I always supply the second parameter so that someone reading my code knows, okay, he's expecting, he's reducing this back to a number value. Now this makes sense to me. I the, this on the first iteration is zero and so forth. I already went through that, but I th I hope this helps you understand reduce a little bit better. If you look at the way that I've used reduced above, I take I say hey I want to make the, I just want to pass in a string because I'm going to reduce this to a string, and I'm going to then concat all the key value pairs delimited with the right delimiters, and I'm going to return the whole the whole thing. So if you look at the um, so let's delete this. If you look at the whole thing, this actually gets really neat because then if you understand that, you could do something like, um, uh, let's think of another, so we have width done, we have border, we have background color. We could then say uh, font um, family is is equal to a um, Arial or something. Uh, by doing that, I can now on that first iteration, I can even augment what I'm passing into it. So, I just wanted to let you guys know how I felt about the implementation of reduce. I wish it was you required to pass in the, the second argument. I, I think it was a mistake to not have that because the, it's just confusing to understand. Um, so, anyways, let's go through this. What, what, what did I save? Well, I didn't really save any performance, um, but I did stay true to less side effects. Um, I don't feel like there's dangling fact, uh, dangling variables in that function scope, this function scope out here, and I feel like I'm, I'm only, I'm using the necessary things possible. Um, I am using this function scope or this variable in this function scope and accessing its properties here, but I feel like that's that's cool already. That's the way you should be using it because it's passed in. There's no side effects. I'm not using anything outside of that function. So this to me is beautiful functional programming. I hope this is helpful to all of you. I love the reduce function and I love all the array functions that they've given us in, in, in JavaScript. And I, I hope to make these short videos on how you can use them in everyday programming. And so this was my first one that I thought, oh, this is definitely applicable to uh, programmers in HTML um, using the DOM. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you have um, comments and if there's a better way to do this, please let me know. I'm all ears. Thanks for watching.